Holy Convocation 2024, moving right along. Amen. The Lord gave a theme, and I tell you, when he gave it, um, I heard him, I, I guess, um, I, I wanted, I needed clarification uh, as I put it out to make sure, sure I put it out correctly. Amen. And, and the theme he gave for this convocation is God said, I'm blessed. God said, I'm blessed. So every night we will be dealing with some aspect of being blessed according to the word of God. Amen. God said, I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, what, what I needed to be sure that I articulated co clearly and correctly was that this is not a week. This is not a week of Holy Ghost lottery. This is not a week of telling anybody um, by the 3rd of March, you're going to have the key to your house. Or by the 15th of May, you will have been proposed to. <laughs> or you're going to get a package in the mail. Amen. Amen. And you'll know it's this package because it won't have no return address. Because you can't mail nothing to heaven. <laughs> I ain't got none of that to say. I do have to say, if we'll occupy these aspects of being blessed of God, then the houses, the land, the money, everything else God wills for our lives, he knows how to get it to us. Amen. Amen. No trickery. Nothing like that. Amen. He, his word says, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. So help me say, God says, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Children, y'all got to say that too now. Because y'all got some courses to pass. And you got, some of y'all got a long ways to go for you get a passing grade. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> amen, amen. I'm going to send you a copy of the clock song, the clock sisters. I'm looking for a miracle. Amen. But if you start confessing, I'm blessed. If you confess it before you study. If you confess it before you step into classes. God will give you favor. Amen. Rather than going in with attitude because you know you're flunking. Amen. Ain't no sense to getting mad with them teachers. Them teachers employed. And they already graduated. Don't go with no attitude. But if you go humbly before them, I'm telling you, God will work on the heart of a mean teacher. I'm telling you. But you got to confess, God says, I'm blessed. I can learn this biology. Amen. I don't want nobody to give me no grade. I can master this. I can learn geometry. If it's in that book and it's learnable, I can learn it. Because God says, I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. To be blessed, that, that word blessed, as we're using it this way, means to be fortunate. Amen. Amen. Or to be relieved. To have a burden taken away. Amen. Or to be fortunate to have good success in some matter. Amen. Amen. To be blessed means to be made holy. It means to be consecrated. Set aside. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. I um, 
was listening to this recording today, and um, young young uh, artist that I, I like the I like his his singing, and I ain't gonna tell you I like all his songs, but I like I generally like him for a young artist. Um, Mac Reynolds, yeah. yeah. Number one, that little Negro can sing. But he got an anointing on his life. But then he he during the this this ministry ministry y'all not performance. During this ministry at West Angeles, he told him he see he said yeah I grew up Church of God in Christ, used to play the organ for him, amen. But then there became a difference between who I was on Sunday and who I was through the week, and God had to work on me. And I had to develop a passion for being who he wants me to be. Y'all hear me, young people and grown people? You got to develop an appetite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You can, you can put up a tent in the church, but if you don't have an appetite for it, you won't get filled. Made holy, consecrated, set aside, divinely favored. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, when you are divinely favored, amen, amen. Paul says, amen. If God be for us, you're trying to count who, who doesn't like you and who ain't speak to you and they don't like me. I don't know why they don't like They don't like you. Your head ain't look right. You look, something wrong. Your foot shaped funny. Something, they just don't like you. Accept it. But the reality that somebody doesn't like you doesn't mean you got a problem. I'm going to fight her. Why you fight her? Because she don't like me. <laughs> you going to be fighting your whole life. <laughs> Divinely favored. As long as the Lord has his hand on your life, there are some people on earth who will despise that. They don't get excited till they hear you having some trouble. They don't get excited, y'all, young people, until they hear you flunking a course, until they hear you been in some trouble. You're in the principal's office. Or you've been expelled. They get excited. There are some people on grown folk, too. Amen. They don't get excited until they hear you having trouble. You can talk to them all day long about how good your family getting along, and they'll say, yeah, okay, that's nice. Uh-huh. All right. See ya. Amen, but now, now I stop and tell them, you know, I don't know what's going on. We just ain't seen eye to eye no more. What, 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 what? <laughs> you know, you can talk to me, you know. <laughs> Which means run! <laughs> divinely favored. Somebody say, I'm divinely favored. Ooh, they loved you when you out there in the mud with them. They loved you when you were doing the same dirt because they could say nasty stuff about you. Amen. They can't stand this recycled you. But you are divinely favored. That's why God snatched you out of some places. That's why God put you in certain places. That's why God established relationships between you and certain people. You are divinely favored. Favored. Hallelujah. Stop apologizing for being divinely favored. Ooh. I'm going to rush on through this. Amen. And when you're divinely favored, amen, you get, you get some Holy Ghost fallout. Amen. You get the joy of the Lord. And then you get prosperity in your spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because if it comes from the Lord, you're going to get it in your spirit before you get it in the natural. Amen. See, God is not going to bless you with something to make you happy. He's going
going to bless you with something because you're faithful even when you're catching hell. You ain't temperamental. You ain't moody. He knows he can count on you. Why could he take an adulterous low life like, like, like David and said, this is a man after my own heart. David messed up, but David knew how to run back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. David, you couldn't beat that joke of repenting. So that's half of the night. Let me give you a text. <laughs> Matthew 16, 13 through 17, especially 17, and I'll refer to 18 in the process, so I'll read that too. Y'all just stay right where you are, and we're going to be out of here in a minute. Amen? Amen. Matthew 16, 13, and I'm going to go on and read through. Well, I'll go on and read through 19. Matthew 16. Verse 13 through 19. Matthew, excuse me. <clears throat> I talk kind of funny sometimes. <laughs> Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Anna got that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Are we communicating? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, let's begin at verse 13. Those of you who are looking at it and read. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, others Jeremiah or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 17 is pivotal. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven so under that theme God says I'm blessed tonight's focus for the next few minutes is revelation revelation amen now, I'm not talking about the book of Revelation. I'm just talking about the spiritual principle of revelation. Amen? And revelation comes right from the word reveal. Right? Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed <laughs> it unto thee. So where, where did the revelation come from? But my Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. There are lots of people walking around saying things and putting and tagging God's name onto it. 
It's a common practice. I would even be so bold as to say a common malady, a common sickness in Christendom today. When people want to add authority to what they're saying, they will often say, God said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, using uh, the name of God to add authority. Amen. But the source of divine revelation is God. Amen. Please get this little, this little teaching as fast as you can. The source of divine revelation is God. Reading the Bible is most pivotal. Equally pivotal is spending time in prayer. Helpful may be reading other books about the Bible, but never substitute other books for the Bible. Never put other books on par with the Bible. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because the divine revelation comes from God. Amen. Now, out of all those disciples, one would have to wonder what gave Peter the insight? How come out of 12 of them, only one passed the test? Now, I heard a, a teacher say a long time ago that they were taught if you give a test and everybody get, get the answer wrong, then you need to throw it out because that was a bad question. I don't necessarily ascribe to that. That might mean nobody studied. <laughs> Amen. Now Jesus asked the question. Who do men say that I am? Y'all out there hanging around them, y'all, y'all listening to them people in the street, what they saying? Some say you Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. All right, that's all right, because that's them people on the streets. But y'all walk with me. And y'all talk with me and we sleep together and we eat together and we minister together. Whom do? <laughs> Revelation comes through relationship. I get so weary of people who have a talent for expressing things in ways that entertain people. But they have no relationship with the God about whom they talk. Revelation comes through relationship. How can somebody say of somebody else, well, I'm going to do so and so, and they'll say, you better not do that because she don't like that. On what authority can they say she doesn't like that? They know it because they have relations. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh my God. Saints, we cannot have revelation if we don't have relationship. What you got to do to have relationship, you got to spend some time got to talk with him and you got to listen to him. Amen. Sometimes you got to hit repeat a few times. But sometimes the first time I hear something it doesn't stick too well. And I have to say, oh Lord, say that to me again. Say it to, say it to me again because I need to get that thing married to my spirit. And in order for me to get it married to my spirit, I need you to say it a few times for me, Lord. I'm kind of slow sometimes. So help me out, please, sir. The source is God. 
And revelation is only cultivated through relationship. So in order for us to be able to say, God says I'm blessed. You got to be spending some time with him. You can't drop by a church house every now and again. Then don't stay long enough to leave an order and then think you got some kind of relationship with God. Bring him when you come. He's sitting with you when you're in worship. And when you get up and leave, hello, Jesus. When you get up and leave, he get up with you. You got to have, relate. somebody said relationship. relationship. Now, y'all said that um, God said I'm blessed, nice and strong. Don't, don't get puny now. <laughs> Amen. If you want to claim God says I'm blessed, you, you and I have to have relationship. With God th through Jesus Christ. You got to have relationship. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We will not go through 2024 on broke down, used to be, every now and then, and call that a relationship. No, sir. We got to cultivate a closeness. With God. So close that when he speaks, we can distinguish his voice from anybody else's. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. Why is it in Christendom we got folk following all kind of crazy Suggest to me they don't know Jesus' voice. Amen. Amen. So the source is almighty God is developed through relationship. Amen. You got to, if, 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 if this requirement needs to be met, if you're going to have relationship, uh, revelation, you got to have a real connection with God. Amen. Amen. What happens when people, um, you see people, um, in, say, in worship who ought to know the Lord, but they never give any indication that there's a connection? Hmm? Well, you just don't treat the one you love any kind of way. You just don't walk away when they're talking. You just don't get on the electronic device and start playing a game with some, somebody trying to have a serious conversation. Yeah. Right? You gotta have a connection. You watch people who have a connection. Sometimes they don't even have to say two words and they can speak a paragraph. They'll look at one another and one will go, hmm. And the other will go, hmm. They just said two full paragraphs and all they said was, hmm. Because they got a connection. And then they meet up later on. And they verbalize that whole encyclopedia that was spoken by. They got a connection. Y'all know that. Y'all see somebody who look funny. You don't say, ooh, that person look funny, though. You just tell them. Because you got a connection. Right? You still saved. Yeah, you do that, but you, you, you yet saved. Amen. Amen. Somebody got on something mismatched. You just look at them and stretch your eye like. 
I know they got dressed in the dark, but you can't say that right then. Amen. Amen. Because there's a connection. Amen. Husband and wife been together for a while. They go someplace socially and they don't say a word. All of a sudden, both of them get up at the same time to leave. They got to. You find one getting up to leave and somebody says, I ain't ready to leave. Disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. <laughs> you got to have a connection if you want revelation. Obviously, while, the, sus while those, the other 11 who weren't necessarily bad guys, even Judas had a purpose. But obviously the other 11 missed some things that Peter picked up on. Come on here, somebody. You get mad sometimes because people got this walk with God and because they just got this anointing and they just they connect with God. Really. Ain't no sense in giving them no bad name. Amen. They, 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 they hear the same sermon you hear. Amen. But they just pick up on, on some stuff you let slide by. One out of 12. Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus had never told them that. Have you ever learned about somebody things that they never told you? Because you pay attention to details. You learn how they handle certain situations. You learn what makes them panic and what keeps them cool. You just want, they never told you, they never told you. Simon, Peter said, thou art the Christ. You are the anointed one. You've been the one, you the one Israel been waiting on. You are the son of the living God. You are divine. You are human and divine. I'm looking at a man, but I'm looking at God. Jesus said, blessed. Y'all got that, got that, y'all got that, that was simple. What empowered Jesus to say, you blessed Peter? Because Peter's answer told Jesus that, that Peter had the revelation. Oh boy. That Peter had the disclosure about who Jesus was. If we're going to be blessed in 2024, we're going to have to have serious connections with Jesus. We got to have a passion for him. We've got to pay attention to him. We got to develop sensitivities to him. We got to stop doing what, 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 what white folk did to steal land from Native Americans, giving them alcohol and trinkets. God is not impressed by your intoxicants nor by your trinkets. He wants us. He wants relationship. And finally, what is the power of revelation? The power of revelation is promotion now I just gave you a filet menu if you don't know how to enjoy it that's on you 
but you can't get nothing no better than that now. The power of revelation is promotion. When you walk close enough to God that he reveals himself to you and he learns he can trust you with the revelation, then he promotes you. And he said to Peter, blessed, you are divinely favored, Peter. You consecrated. You promoted. Now, if we started naming disciples right now, most of us might name four or five. But the one almost all of us will name is Peter. Peter! And, and Jane and uh, John and uh, everything get quiet after Peter. Because <laughs> he got promoted. So I got to wrap this up by asking you, can you stand promotion? Can you stand for God to put his hand of favor on your life such that stuff happens that just doesn't make sense in the natural? God gives you favor. God opens doors. People don't understand it. Some can't stand you. They'll accuse you of stuff you ain't doing, but it ain't you. God put his hands on you. It's divine favor. Can you handle promotion? Will you turn your back on God? Will you remain true if God promotes you? Can you handle the revelation? Promotion means, just so you, we'll know it all, promotion means you're made an easy target. You can refuse the prom promotion and fade to black and you just be another face with no features in the crowd. But promotion doesn't mean you get arrogant. It doesn't mean you stick your chest out like you better than people. As a matter of fact, divine promotion is humbling. Because with divine promotion comes divine responsibility. I, I, I want to say this, but I don't want Sometimes when you walk in the anointing of the Lord, there are times when you almost wish that you fit in with other people a little better. Because people will treat you kind of funny when you walk into that anointing. But I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have the revelation, baby. I'd rather hear him know my name. Out of 12 disciples, he, the only name he called in this passage was Simon Peter. You are son of Jonah, bar Jonah, son, son, I want to make sure in case another Simon right here eavesdropping. Simon Peter, son of Jonah. Can we handle the promotion? Can I handle flowing with what God is doing in 2024? Amen. Did I straighten it out and leave in 2023 what I needed to leave there? And since 12 midnight last night, have I gone back to pick up any of that mess? Have I been able to walk this far in 2024, leaving that stuff in 23? God says, I'm blessed. Now, I got to learn how to handle that. I got to learn how to not feel insecure 
I got to not listen to the naysayers who will say, I think I'm something. I don't think I'm nothing but a child of God. Amen. But I spend time with him. I cultivate relationship with him. And because he knows my name, he knows he can trust me with things and he can trust you with things. And he bestows divine, fa divine favor. Your name is Peter. You the little rock. And upon this big rock, which is the revelation that you got from God, that's, that's why God didn't build no church on Peter. He said, you're a little rock. But the truth God put in you, that's the big rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Peter 4 is all over. You going to cuss? <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't you going to cut a man ear off? And then you're going to preach on Pentecost. And over 3,000 souls will be baptized in that one meeting, Peter, because of revelation. Young people, you can have wonderful futures, but you got to put your hands in the hands of the man. He, he may use you mightily, but you got to be totally submitted to him. Just like Jonathan McReynolds said, you can't have a foot in the world and a foot in the church. God said, I'm blessed. And the blessing is manifested through revelation. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my soul. This is my song. I'm praising my say all the day long. This is my story. This is my story. God said I'm blessed. This is my song. God said I'm blessed. Is that your story? Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my soul, yes, Lord. I'm praising my Savior. Come on, say, God said I'm blessed. I have a soul, saints, I have a song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I have a soul. Yes, Lord. I'm praising my Savior. Come on, come on, let him bless you. God says I'm blessed. I have a story. I have a Yes, Lord. I'm praising all the day long. I have a soul. Yes, Lord. I'm praising my Savior. God said you're blessed. This is my story. This 
sing my song. I'm praising. for the unsaved who want to give their lives to Christ. If you're not saved and but you feel him tugging at you and telling you to come on, then please come. Please come. Please come. If you're backslidden and you need to be restored, please come. I have no condemnation. I have no judgment. All I have is Jesus. Lord, I want to straighten it out. I want to walk into 2024 doing it right, God. I was still vacillating. I was still in between. I was still double-minded. But God, before the first ends, before I move into the second, God, I want to, I want to move into this, this year correctly. So I'm coming, to, I'm, I'm coming to give my whole self to you again in the name of Jesus. You need a covering. You need a shelter. I see now. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come on and do that. Glory to God. Then I put out a challenge to those of us who know that God has said some things. God has pronounced some things as his will for 2024 for you. And you want to seal it. You want to say, God, I, I know I heard you say so and so. But Lord, the devil been fighting my mind. The devil been bringing the what ifs. The devil been bringing, I don't know whether, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how certain this is. I don't know what, uh, I, I, he, the devil been kind of trying to bring them distractions. But I heard you clearly say, this is your will for my life. Lord, and, and I seek to, to daily walk with you. And I don't want the revelation you've given me to be stolen, God. So I want to seal it. I want to seal it, God. 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 I want to seal it. I, want, I don't want the enemy stealing that revelation and stealing my relationship, stealing my closeness with you, stealing my testimony. If, I, if I'm not careful, I won't be able to say that you said I'm blessed. I'll be silenced because of my lack of belief. Anybody just wanna, want us to agree with you in prayer? If you come for prayer, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. Amen, I'm not questioning your salvation. I'm just saying, is 2024 in the hands of the man who steal the water or is it in your hands amen I'm telling you I do not mind working but I'm telling you if you ignore the call of the Lord and the enemy comes and ravishes and steals God's plans for your life ain't nothing I can do but say, oh Lord, so sad. You can seal it right now. You can seal it right now. If God said it, you can have it right now. Even on a cloudy day, you still got it. Even when sickness comes your way, you still got it. Even when confusion tries to break in your life, you still got the promise of God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I have a store. I have praising my I have a 
since I have preachers, y'all got a story. I hope deacons, you got to have a story. Choir members, you got to have a story. You cannot minister to other people what you ain't believing for yourself. Musicians, you got to have a story. Glory to God. Not just the talent, you got to have a story about that connection with God. Ushers, you got to have a story. I got to have a story. This is one of the most powerful and promising hours and 15 minutes you've ever spent in worship. I feel the heaviness the, of the Holy Ghost in this place so strongly tonight. If you can believe God, God can do it. If you can believe God, God can do it. And I'm telling you, if you would just mess around and look over that right shoulder for a minute, you'll see that he has a perfect record with you. He's done it so many times before. And if you get tired of that, look over your left shoulder and you'll see he has a perfect record. He has brought you through. He's brought you out. He's made a way. He's delivered you over and over. And uh, God said, I see now God said it. God said, I'm blessed. God said it. I ain't trying to blaze my own pathway. He's blazing the pathway and he's leading me in it. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Now God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We surrender, surrender, sign of surrender is lifted hands. Lifted hands mean I surrender. Not trying to protect myself, not trying to protect my face, not trying to protect my chest, not trying to protect my loin. I'm, I'm open, I'm vulnerable, God, because I know you ain't going to hurt me. I surrender to you, God. Do what you want to do. Do what you need to do. God, if there's a rough spot, I need you to work it on out, God. Oh, God, if there's something that will cause me to fatally fall, I need you to work it out, God. Oh, God, if there's some point of view that, that needs to be plucked out, I need you to pluck it on out, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Your word is true and your word is right all by itself. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for telling us as your children that your desire, your pronouncement is we are blessed. And you leave it with us to make a decision about whether we want to be connected with you and whether we value that connectivity and that relationship. Lord, whether, whether we, uh, whether we uh, take advantage of the resources that are available and whether we are ready to embrace promotion. Thank you, God. We understand that it is not your will that we spend another year just like we spent last year. Thank you for the blessing of promotion. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you for using Peter as an example, a model of what all of us can have, divine favor. So much so that you trusted him 
and those who would walk in that kind of favor. You trust us with the keys of the kingdom. And you give us the authority to bind and to loose in the name of Jesus. Oh God, help us to never take that authority for granted. To never use it for selfish reasons. To always use it to glorify you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Seal it in us now. When doubt or fear would come to steal that word, God, seal it. Seal it so that no intrusion of the enemy can take it or shake it away from us. Seal that word in us. You said we are blessed. And we intentionally covet and pursue that connection with you that we may enjoy revelation that you may say of us as you said of Simon Peter, blessed art thou. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. God, I pray for the unsaved. Oh God, bring them in today. God, I pray for the backsliders, God, that they come back. Reconnect, God, and I pray for the saints that we be strengthened, God, that we may bring somebody with us who needs the Lord. Thank you for this worship in Jesus' name. We thank you, we praise you. Ah, uh, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We've got every right to say yes, Lord, because you said we're blessed. Just walk in that revelation. We got every responsibility to say yes, Lord, because you said we're blessed. And we just walk in that revelation. We thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name. Give God praise, y'all. All the way back to your seat.